This video is about to be crazy. This is something that I've been wanting to talk about for a very long time, but I just couldn't find the right words to say to give this topic any justice. No matter what age you are, this video is for you, but it's especially for you if you're young, because in life, you will be discouraged. You will be doubted, slept on, laughed at, and criticized all because of money and success not because of how much money and success you actually have but because of how much money and success people think you have and i'm going to tell you this one thing if you let what others think and say about you discourage you from going after your definition of success you'll lose every single time Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. We're going to get into this video. When you take a look around, how many happy, successful people do you see? How many people do you see who are in a good place financially? Now, while you're thinking about that question, let's rewind. We're going to turn back the hands of time and we're going to revisit the first time you ever found out about what success is and what you were told about it. Because ironically, that's where 95% of people are set up for failure. Generally speaking, success is directly tied to money and that's pretty much what you're told as a kid and that's how they describe it to you when they're telling you what success is. But obviously when you're a kid, nine times out of 10, you're not making any money besides like the allowance that your parents are giving you and that's if they give you an allowance at all. So they have to define your success in a different way for when you're young and when you're in school, it's your grades that defines your success. When you're in sports, it's how many times you win that define your success. But more than anything, the emphasis is put on school and it is heavily implied that the better your grades are in school, that is a good baseline for how successful you'll be in life. And I'm telling you right now, that's a line of BS because that's a very discreet way of saying that success equals money and only money. It's saying that success is your title. Why do you think classes like physics, calculus, biology, and chemistry get so much hype in school? Because they aren't easy classes to excel in and you see successful people like doctors, engineers, and scientists taking these classes when they were in school. What are those careers and titles linked to? Money. What is money linked to? Success. Let me ask you something. How many janitors are considered successful? How many waiters and waitresses are considered successful? Exactly, yet we don't know anything about them. We don't know what she does outside of work. We don't know what he's doing. We don't know if they're business owners. We don't know if they're making a million dollars a year. We don't know. We just see the title and say, oh, they're not successful. And because these men and women with those titles are seen as unsuccessful, they get a lot of crap. People disrespect them all the time, almost as if to say that I'm better than you so I can disrespect you. Almost as if to say that I'm more successful than you. I earn more than you so I have the right to disrespect you. And the part that hurts the most about all of this is the fact that it's a delusional way of thinking. For one, money does not equal success, and we'll get to that in a second. And two, attributing your success to your title is is dehumanizing and stupid. And I can confidently say that without any hesitation because I've done it. And when you start to think of success in that way, you start to tie the success within your title to your self-worth. And if you didn't catch that, I'll put it like this. When you link success to your title and money and only those two things, your success then becomes dependent on your ability to be good at what you do. If you just so happen to have one of those days where you're just off your game for whatever reason, or if you just straight up drop the ball or completely fail like I did, then guess what? You lose any sense of self-worth and confidence you thought you had all because you dropped the ball or all because you made a mistake and the wrong person found out at the wrong time. One time, it just takes one time for that to happen. And after that one time, your world starts to crumble. And I'll tell you this, I've been through that more times than I can count and each time was just a little more devastating than the other. And it's partially because of the fact that with every single space I wanted to step into, I wanted to own it. I'm very competitive and I like to dominate. In school, I dominated. In the gym, I dominated. In martial arts, I dominated. In drumline, I dominated. So of course I approached work with the same mentality. And I started off pretty good at first. You know, I was asking all the right questions. I was displaying good leadership qualities. I was coming in early, leaving late. Then boom, before I even knew it, my training was over and they threw me to the wolves. And I didn't even know it low key. It was game on. I'll never forget the first time I failed at work. I was 21 years old, 
fresh out of college. I was in a management role and I was over a big manufacturing facility and I had the whole department to myself. Man, all of the machines around me were going down. My people were disappearing and walking off of their machines and not returning to them. It was crazy. I had zero control and zero knowledge of what the heck was even going on. So the neighboring department needed products from my department and because my department couldn't deliver because every single machine was down and no one was present at their machine, they weren't able to complete their products and so all that lost time and unfinished product got charged to my department and in the morning I had to explain all of that. Then one of the managers from that neighboring department who I wasn't able to deliver to, she came up to me laughing and she was one of my peers. Yeah, she had the nerve to come up to me laughing talking about some, huh, you gonna take that L today. And for those of you who don't know, taking an L is taking a loss. You see, that's disrespect because she just saw me as some kid who didn't know what the heck he was doing that just got the job handed to him. And all because of that one moment, that one mistake that was mostly out of my control. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't control machines being down mechanically. She viewed me as being unsuccessful. From her point of view, I wasn't good at my job. And she was good at her job. So that makes her more successful than me. And because she saw herself as more successful than me, she saw that as an opportunity to discredit what I've done. And then add insult to injury by laughing. And let me tell you just how devastating this was for me. It was like life was moving in slow motion and my thoughts were moving very, very fast, like a thousand miles per hour. I was asking myself all kinds of questions, mainly, are they going to fire me? But I was also rethinking my life choices too. I was like, why did I even take this job? And then I started the whole negative self-talk thing and started saying stuff like, maybe you aren't as smart as you think you are. Maybe everyone is right. A young person can't manage people. Maybe I am just a kid, a kid who's out of his mind and delusionally thinks that he can do anything he sets his mind to. Listen, because of this one mistake, because of this one failure, I gave negative thoughts the permission to enter my mind. And guess what? I lost. It was game over. Because at that moment, I had no self-worth, no confidence whatsoever. My heart was about to beat out of my chest. I walked with my head down. The room got colder and darker. And when the morning came and when upper management got to work, all I got was looks. You know what I mean? Like no one even had to say anything. I don't know if it's just me, but whenever I really care about something and I want to deliver, but I don't deliver as expected, it feels like the entire world is shrinking right down to the size of my surroundings. And it didn't matter if anyone was looking at me or talking about me because if they had a pulse, I thought they were. I thought they were looking at me, thinking about me, criticizing me, because I mean, I was criticizing myself. And just like that, just like that, any confidence I thought I had turned into insecurities. All because of money and success. And I was making ridiculous money for a 21 year old, but because I didn't have a successful night at work, I thought the money and the title would go away and this would be wiped off the face of the earth, which would wipe any success I ever had off the face of the earth as well. But as fate would have it, that L I took wasn't a loss, but a big life lesson. Look, check this out. A few months later, I had developed very, very, very well into that job and I was seen as a high performer. The money was good and I was good at my job, but there was just one problem. I had no life whatsoever. I looked at my bosses, they had no life. We all had money. We were all good at our jobs, but we had no life. I worked ungodly hours. I'm talking 80 plus hours a week. There was no happiness, just work. In fact, that was mentally the darkest place I've ever been in my entire life. So what I'm saying here is bro, how can you consider yourself to be successful if you're not even happy? How? How can you consider yourself successful just because you make a certain amount of money? Just because you have an impressive title? What happens if you lose that title? What are you? That's what you need to ask yourself. Not just what are you, but who are you? You could be a son, a daughter, a father, a mother, a mentor, a friend, somebody who needs you to win. You do know that, right? You are somebody's hero. When you come home to your kids after work, they don't know what kind of day you just had at work. All they know is that they got clothes on their backs and food on the table. And for that, you're their hero. You're providing for them. 
You're giving them what they need. You're educating them. You're spending time with them. That's where success comes from. You can't just hide behind a title all your life. If you do, you're just fooling other people. But you know what? You can't fool yourself. That's literally the definition of living a lie. Stop capping. When you leave work, when you pull up in your driveway, when you go inside your house, when you take off your work clothes, who are you? And are you truly successful? I don't care if you're a business owner or if you work retail. Look in the mirror and ask yourself that. Because that's what everybody wants, right? Everybody just wants to be successful. But everyone just has a different definition of what success really is and they all have a different way of going about it. Are you happy? Do you enjoy what you do? Do you fully understand your self-worth? Are you being smart with your money? Are you able to provide for yourself and those who count on you and then some? Because that's what success is. I don't care what anybody says. If your answer to any of those questions was no, then you're just not there yet. Maybe you're just not cold yet. And that's okay, bro. And it's not about making six figures a year. That's all you ever hear everybody say is, I wanna make six figures, I wanna make six figures. That's not even what matters, because you know what? What matters more than making six figures is this. Are you happy with the money that you're making? Are you living below your means? Are you investing your money continuously in improving yourself? Are you putting your money away and are you scaling your money up more and more every single year? Because that's what matters. And what I'm saying is, if you do all of that, eventually you will get to the six figure range. Inevitably, that's just how it works. If you have the strong desire and you truly want this, you will work for it until you get it. But there's a difference between wishing and wanting. And the thing I really want you to think about is this, because six figures doesn't necessarily equal success either. I'm about to get into that right now. But I want you to think about this. Why is six figures even the goal? Because somebody else said it's the goal? Oh, I know, I know. So you can run around telling people you make six figures now? I'm telling you right now, I just described the thought process of like 90% of the nation. Man or woman, it doesn't matter. And my point behind that is, want six figures because you want six figures. Not because somebody, some man, some woman, some girl, some guy is telling you to earn six figures. Do it because you want to do it. And here's the thing, and this is exactly why I said what I said in the beginning about the fact that no one's going to even know how much you make anyway. It's not like you're going to run around telling people. It's not like you're going to broadcast your salary over your head and just like... Hey, I make six figures. No, you're not going to do that. But like I said, your success is based off of the perception of what others think you make based off of either how you carry yourself or based off of your title or based off of what you say you do. They have no other indication of how much you make besides that. Even if you told people that you make six figures a year, they're not going to know how much money you make because again, success is subjective, right? So $100,000 might not be anything to the person next door. So if I told you I make six figures right now, would you be able to tell me how much money I make? No, you can't. Why? Because it will be anywhere between $100,000 a year and $999,999 a year. That's a gigantic gap. And another thing, there's plenty of folks out here who have achieved the overglorified goal of earning six figures a year and still live paycheck to paycheck. That's not cold. I can't consider that successful. Nope, not when this guy over here makes $50,000 a year, but he's got investments. His house is paid off. He's got all kinds of savings in his account. He's happy. His family's happy. He's got assets. He's not reckless with his money. He knows what the heck he's doing. Which one is more successful? Look here, the money you make is not what makes you successful but it's the money you retain and the happiness that you have in your life that makes you successful. That's what makes you cold. Always remember that. More importantly, you've got to remember that you exist in this world for a reason, and that reason is much bigger than fulfilling someone's arbitrary, subjective idea of what success actually is. You just got to figure out what that reason is, bro. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.